Yo, 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 what's up, y'all? It's Comb back here again today with another video. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about the New York Knicks, who have been one of the most disappointing teams in the NBA so far. Last year, of course, they shocked the world and came out of kind of nowhere to get the fourth seed in the Eastern Conference. They were led by improved play from the most improved player and it all NBA second teamer Julius Randle, which still kind of seems crazy to say. Former third overall pick RJ Barrett had some pretty great performances over the course of the year. Complimentary pieces like Derrick Rose, who they got around the trade deadline, uh, Alec Burks, Nerlens Noel, guys like that really helped contribute to this Knicks team finding an identity, sticking to it, and riding it all the way to being having home court advantage in the Eastern Conference. Uh, Tom Thibodeau won Coach of the Year. He was one of the best moves by any team over the course of the offseason, leading the Knicks to the identity that they found and a four seed. But they disappointed in the playoffs. They lost four to one to the Hawks, primarily due to their inconsistent scoring. They really couldn't put the ball in the basket. Julius Randle struggled really hard after being, like I said, an all NBA second teamer in that series. But coming out of the year, they had a lot of stuff to build on. They tried, they made some key acquisitions uh, to try and improve their scoring in like Evan Fournier and Kemba Walker. And they look primed to try and build on last season. There were a lot of things to be excited about if you were a New York Knicks fan. Instead, they've been very, very disappointing. Uh, up to this point, they're 12th in the East. They're three and seven in their last 10 games, including blowout losses to the Bucks, the Pacers, the Nuggets, the Suns. They just can't compete with top teams. And even like I said, the Pacers and the Nuggets who are around middle of the pack teams, they're still getting blown out by them. Last year, the Knicks had a really concrete identity of being this tough, slow-paced, defensive-oriented team that was never too great at scoring. They had some solid scores in Julius Randle, like I said. RJ Barrett was decently efficient. Derrick Rose could get you some buckets, but that was never their identity. Their identity was that they were going to lock you up on the other side of the ball and get enough buckets to get by you with a win. That was the way that they played. They grinded out games, and it worked. But this year, that identity has really fallen apart. When we look at their scoring and defense last season, last season, they were fourth out of all 30 teams in defensive rating. Amazing. This year, they are 25th out of all 30 teams. They're giving up the fifth most points in the NBA up to this point. For a team that's whole thing is defense behind a defensive minded coach in Tom Thibodeau, that's embarrassing. You can't have that happen, especially because they're not good at scoring the ball. They have improved in terms of their ranking. Last season, they were 26 in the league in scoring, and this year they're 22nd. But that has also led to a, their points are down 1.2 points per game. Scoring across the league is down. They're now scoring the ball less, even though they are higher up in terms of their rank in the NBA. They're scoring the ball less, they can't stop anyone, and that's leading to them just falling apart in games to the point where a lot of them turn into blowouts. And pretty much everyone on the team so far has disappointed. Julius Randle, last season, all NBA player, 24.1 points per game, 10.2 rebounds, 6 assists, his playmaking was phenomenal, shooting 45.6% from the field, 41% from 3, 81.1% from free throw. He's He was doing everything. He was scoring efficiently, he was playmaking, he was a do-it-all guy for that Knicks team. This year, 19.5 points per game, he's down around 5 points per game. 10 rebounds right around the same amount, down about an assist per game, and shooting 43%, down 3%, and 8% down from last season from the three-point line. Also shooting 5% worse from free throw, just to kind of add to it. He's regressed across the board efficiency-wise, and he was their go-to score. In the playoffs, that didn't quite work out, but over the course of the regular season, whenever they needed a bucket, they went to Julius Randle, and more often than not, he got it done. He was clutch, he could score on pretty much everyone, and even when teams tried to game plan to stop him because the Knicks don't have a lot of consistent scores, he was finding a way to get you a bucket. One of the biggest things that's regressed is his mid-range shooting. It's dropped like 10% as well. He can't seem to score the ball from anywhere as consistently as he could last season. And that's something that we've seen across the board over the entire NBA. A lot of guys shooting percentages are down, but for a team that already really couldn't score the basketball to have your by far your best scorer fall off a cliff like this, you're screwed. If you can't get stops like they could last season and they can't score the ball, they can't win basketball games. To make matters worse, he signed a four year around $120 million contract extension this offseason. If he can't get back on track to the player that he was, that contract is going to look really, really bad in a couple years. It's only been, a, it hasn't been a half season yet. I'm, I'm still convinced that Julius Randle is a solid player, but this regression is really concerning for the Knicks because he was their go-to guy. He looked like the piece they could build around. And with him falling off like this, it's scary. 
if he can't get things together, the Knicks don't have a chance of building this team up from this point on. He's got to get it together. RJ Barrett scoring about uh, last season, he scored 17 and a half points per game, six rebounds, three assists. This year, he's down to 15.1, down two and a half points per game. He shot 40% from three last year. He's down to 35% on more attempts too. So he's shooting the ball more and scoring it less, which is very concerning. He's shooting only 40% from the field too. He can't score inside the arc. Nothing is going in for RJ Barrett right now. And starting to look more and more like that third overall pick that he was, he's just going to be kind of a solid player, which there's nothing wrong with that. But for a guy that you got with the third overall pick that you were hoping could be the piece that you build around, it's kind of starting to look like he might not be that guy. And I, it's very early in his career to say he's a bust or anything. But so far, especially over the course of the season, he hasn't shown the improvement that you would you were hoping if you were a Knicks fan that he would show over the course of this year. Derrick Rose, like I said, he was one of their biggest acquisitions last season, being their best scorer in the playoffs, probably their best player period in the playoffs with the way that a lot of the team played, but he's had a slower start to the year. Last year, when he got to the Knicks, he scored around 15 points per game. Now he's scoring 12. His field goal percentage is down. His three-point percentage is down. He's struggling. Mitchell Robinson has been disappointing. He hasn't been able to stay on the court a lot of times because one of the main things that they looked at with him was his defense. His defense has been super kind of here and there. He's had a lot of lapses. He hasn't been able to stay on the court either due to foul troubles. He's not even starting. He didn't start the last couple games. He got benched in favor of Nerlens Noel, a guy that a lot of people thought, me included, thought he was going to be a franchise cornerstone going forward. He looked like their center of the future, and now there's a question of how much do you want to pay him if he can't stay on the court because he can't stop fouling people or guard anyone. Emmanuel quickly, he's going through a sophomore slump. He had a big season last year, and sophomore slumps are pretty common in the NBA. I think he's going to figure it out, but you're starting to see a trend here. Everyone has everyone that they had last season that was big for them is playing worse. Evan Fournier, who was supposed to be their biggest acquisition that would help fix their scoring issues, has not lived up to it. 12.7 points per game, that's not enough. He's only shooting 41% from the field as well. His three point, per three point percentage has been solid at 38.6%, but he can't seem to score within the arc. He can't hit mid ranges. He's not doing nearly enough to justify the $20 million contract that they gave him. That's a lot of money to pay for 12.7 points per game on 41% shooting. If they want 38.6% from three, they could have just re-signed Reggie Bullock, who was a 40% three-point threat last year and a solid defender that really fit their team well. He has not played great on the Mavs this year. I will give them that. He's been kind of, he's been pretty mediocre, but the Knicks do miss his type of production where he was scoring the ball efficiently as a three-point shooter and locked up defensively. Fournier's defense hasn't been quite there, nor has the defense of their other big acquisition, Kemba Walker. The Knicks got him for super cheap, and it looked like he was a good option to buy low on. Worst case, he falls out of your, or he's just kind of a decent starter, and eventually you, you know, you kind of move on from him because he's older. It's whatever. They didn't give him that much money. But I thought his floor, like I said, was a decent starter, or even just, okay, whatever. He's completely fallen out of the rotation. His defense has been a massive issue for a team, once again, like I said, they pride themselves on their defense, or at least that's what they try to. He has not been able to guard anyone. His facilitation leaves a lot to be desired at 3.1 assists per game. He's only scoring 12 points per game, shooting 43%. It's not enough. His offense that he pro provides is not enough to justify having him on the court due to how big of a defensive, just kind of traffic cone he is. And so now he's been benched. He's not even playing one of the guys who was supposed to be their second biggest acquisition of the offseason. And finally, Tom Thibodeau. He's switching up rotations a lot, trying to find a solution, but I'm not sure if it's there or not to figure out what they are missing from last year. That spark just kind of seems to be gone. And the noise around him has started to get louder. Last year, they weren't very good at this point in the season either. There's plenty of time to turn things around, but the problem is that last year's playoff run, where they made it once again to the four seed, has built up a lot of expectations. And when you're the coach of the New York Knicks, you've got a lot of eyes on you. Like half the people in my Twitter timeline are calling for his head at this point and for him to be fired. Despite being a defensive coach, the team can't seem to guard anyone at all. There've been multiple times that I've seen him on the sideline have like outbursts or just seem like super pissed off, which is kind of just Tom Thibodeau in general, but it feels like he's floundering, trying to figure things out and they just can't seem to find that spark. Almost everyone on the team has been disappointing. Everyone. 
there have been a couple bright spots. Uh, Quentin Grimes in the game that they played against the Bucks today that inspired me to make this video had seven threes, which is in a Knicks rookie record. So that's huge for them. Maybe he kind of finds some more minutes. He can help them find some of the scoring that they need. Obi Toppin has had some solid outings. But beyond that, hasn't been much for the New York Knicks after starting off decently strong to the season. That big win over the Celtics reference like the Knicks, they're, they're back. They weren't a fraud last year. They're struggling really bad. Um, things look bleak. They do have a bit of an easier schedule coming up with multiple. I think they have two games against the Pistons, a game against the Rockets and a game against the Thunder coming up within the next month, alongside some other teams that are kind of struggling. The Boston Celtics have been struggling. I believe that's their next game. The Minnesota Timberwolves have been kind of on and off. The Wizards, who have really fallen off since the start of the season, they do have some tougher games in there as well with like the Warriors and the, the, um, the Hawks. That's the team I couldn't think the name of. But if, the, if they don't figure out in this stretch where they've got a lot of time against kind of mediocre opponents to really figure things out, if they go into the new year and they're still struggling, I don't know if they can turn it around. This is their best chance. They've got a lot of easy games coming up, like I said. If they're not able to turn things around quickly, then they're quickly going from bing bong to ping pong because they're going to be in the lottery. So those are my thoughts on the New York Knicks. Let me know what you think about them. Um, I appreciate y'all watching. I'll see y'all later. Real one safe.